everyone. In this video, we are going to be talking about Boyce Cod Normal Form or BCNF. While third normal form removes most of our data redundancy problems, as we'll come to find out, there is still the potential for data redundancy even when we are in third normal form. And this happens when we have at least two candidate keys in our relation that are composite attributes, that's they are made up of more than one attribute, and there is some overlap in the attributes that make up these candidate keys. So this is where BCNF comes in handy. However, as we'll find out at the end of this video, there is sometimes a trade-off between third normal form and BCNF. So it's not a universal fix, but it's something that could come in quite handy. So we say a relation R is in BCNF if for every non-trivial functional dependency in the relation, the determinant is a superkey of the relation. And now based on this definition, it means that uh, a violation of second normal form or third normal form would also be a violation of BCNF. And this is just the same pattern that we've seen with all of our normal forms in that to be in a higher level normal form, you have to meet all the criteria for the lower level normal forms. So consider this example. So we have a relation with the attributes X, A, B, C, D. Uh, these two functional dependencies, X, A determines B and X, A determines C. And of course we could uh, put that together to say X, A determines B, C. And then a third functional dependency of B functionally determines X. So what are our candidate keys? And uh, we'll go through both the synthesis and decomposition process here. So let's start by finding the closure of our determinants. So the closure of XA through reflexivity, we know XA can functionally determine X and A. And then through functional dependency 1, XA can also functionally determine B. And through functional dependency 2, XA functionally determines C. So the closure of XA is XABC, which is all of the attributes in our relation. So already we know XA must be a candidate key. And just for fun, let's go ahead and find the closure of B, which through reflexivity includes B and through functional dependency three includes A. And I believe that's as far as we can go. If we just know B and A, we cannot functionally determine any other attributes based on that, okay? But so far we know that we have one candidate key of XA. And then we're going to ask the question, uh, are any of our key attributes or is the candidate key a dependent in any of our functional dependencies? And in this case, we see in functional dependency three, B functionally determines A. So that means anywhere we have an A, we could put a B. So that means we have a second candidate key of XB. So we have these two candidate keys and note that there is an overlap and the attributes that make up these candidate keys. X is a key attribute in both of our candidate keys. So this is the perfect scenario where we have a violation of boyce cod normal form that's going to result in some data redundancy. So as we look in, in more depth at the relation and the attributes here, uh, let's ask, is there a second normal form violation? And recall that R is in second normal form if it is in first normal form and no non-key attribute is functionally determined by part of a candidate key. Now, it may at first look like this second functional dependency, B determines A, is a partial dependency because A is being functionally determined by part of this candidate key. However, note that we have three key attributes here, A, B, and X. And in this case, we have a key attribute being functionally determined by part of a candidate key. So this is actually not a partial dependency and not a violation of second normal form. So this relation is in at least second normal form. 
So the next thing we want to ask is, is this relation in third normal form? And recall that a third normal form violation is a transitive dependency, or when we have a non-key attribute that functionally determines another non-key attribute. Well, in this case, B determines A, this is a key attribute functionally determining another key attribute, so that's actually okay. We do not have a violation of third normal form, so this relation is in at least 3NF. Now to determine if this relation is in Boyce-Codd normal form, we need to ask the question, uh, if for every non-trivial functional dependency is the determinant, a super key for the relation. And in this case, uh, XA in this functional dependency, that is a super key, it's a candidate key, it has the property of uniqueness. However, in the second functional dependency, B determines A, B is not a super key. B by itself is not unique. So uh, there is a violation of Boyce-Codd normal form because B is not a super key. So we are in third normal form, but we are not in Boyce-Codd normal form. And so we'll see the problems that this is going to lead to in the upcoming example. In order to resolve our BCNF violation, we do just the exact same thing we did to resolve our second and third normal form violations. We move the undesirable functional dependencies out from the source relation into a new relation, leaving behind the determinant in that functional dependency so that we can bring back together these relations at a later point in time. So let's work through an example here. Imagine we have this relation uh, with four attributes, student, subject, teacher, and AP score. And so in, in this example, uh, your AP score is like an advanced placement or, or a, a score that you get for a particular subject to see if you can count it for uh, college credit. So in this case, we have uh, some students that have taken subjects with teachers and received some AP score for that subject. We have these three functional dependencies, student number and subject together functionally determine teacher, student number and subject together functionally determine AP score, and teacher functionally determines subject. And so this is what our dependency diagram looks like. And hopefully, uh, at this point, it's becoming a little bit obvious that student and subject together, of course, that can functionally determine both student and subject. They determine teacher and determine AP score. So we have a candidate key here of student number and subject. And then also, uh, teacher functionally determines subject. So effectively, what this means is that each teacher teaches only one subject. Now, a subject might be taught by multiple teachers, and we see that uh, demonstrated here in our data. So, Campbell teaches English. Campbell teaches English. Okay, Campbell teaches only one subject. However, we have multiple people that teach English. So, English is taught by Stefan. English is taught by Campbell. English is taught by Campbell. Okay, so if I ask you what teacher teaches English, you don't know the answer to that because there are multiple teachers that teach English. If I ask you what subject does Walker teach, well, Walker teaches history. There's only one uh, unique answer for that, okay? So student number and subject together are a candidate key, but then teacher functionally determines subject. So anywhere we have uh, subject, we could put teacher in its place, okay? So based on that, we can also infer these two additional functional dependencies that student number and teacher together functionally determines subject and student and teacher together functionally determine AP score. Okay, so this FD5 is just the pseudotransitivity of FD2 and FD3. And then FD4 is just the augmentation adding student number to FD3. So teacher determines subject, so it's also true that student and teacher together functionally determine subject, okay? So we have these two candidate keys of student number and subject and student number and teacher. At this point, is there a third normal form violation? Well, no, there's not, right? We don't have any uh, 
non-key attributes, functionally determining non-key attributes. And in fact, our only non-key attribute is this attribute AP score, and it doesn't functionally determine anything. So we're in third normal form. However, is there any data redundancy? So every time we repeat a teacher and the subject that they teach, that is redundant data, right? Because uh, Campbell teaches English, Campbell teaches English. Well, this second time that we see English for Campbell, that's not telling us anything new. So we do have some data redundancy here, even though we are in third normal form. Now, is there a BCNF violation? Yes, because in FD3, teacher is not a super key, right? So FD1, 2, 4, and 5 are all fine because student subject is a super key and student teacher is a super key, but teacher by itself is not a super key. And one thing I would point out about this relation, this is actually the exact same relation that we just had in our previous example right here. XA determines BC and B determines A. Okay, so look at the structure of this. And now look at this. This is just XA functionally determines BC and B determines A, right? Same exact scenario. We've just put some words to it instead of the letters. And so the problem that this is creating, we have our same modification anomalies we've uh, talked about before. If we wanted to add a new teacher for a subject, so let's say we're going to have a third English teacher, Salter, come on board. Well, we cannot add that teacher and subject without kind of arbitrarily assigning them to have had a student for that subject and that that student has taken the AP test and has some AP score. Okay, so we can't insert a new teacher or a new subject without inserting some uh, unrelated values. Or if we wanted to replace uh, Campbell with some other teacher uh, like Smith, we would have to update multiple tuples in order to make that change. Or if we wanted to say delete the teacher Rituri, well, now we're going to lose information about student IH uh, 571 and student IH 123 and what their AP score in chemistry was, right? So just because we want to delete a teacher from the database, that doesn't mean we should be losing any information about students or their AP scores. Okay, so we have our, our modification anomalies due to this redundant data. So we want to resolve this BCNF violation. In order to resolve the BCNF violation, uh, what we want to do is just take this problematic functional dependency of teacher functionally determined subject and move that out to a new relation. Okay, so we have these two candidate keys, student subject and student teacher, and we've previously said that it doesn't really matter what candidate key we select as our primary key, but as we're going to see now as we move from 3NF to BCNF, it actually does change the outcome of the resolution depending on what candidate key we select as our primary key. So let's uh, select student number teacher for now and then we'll go back and see what would have happened if we had chosen our other candidate key. So in this case with student teacher as our primary key for the, uh, for the student uh, AP score relation, we have the functional dependency of student and teacher together functionally determines AP score, and we've moved out that problematic functional dependency of teacher determined subject into a new relation. We've left behind the determinant of that uh, functional dependency, and so now teacher is a foreign key in this relation that refers back to teacher in the teacher subject relation. Okay. So now we can add a new teacher for a subject uh, without impacting or without having to associate them with a student or an AP score. If we were to delete uh, one of our teachers from the database, that doesn't impact anything about our students or the uh, AP scores, right? So now we have uh, gotten rid of that redundant data and rid of our modification anomalies. So this actually worked out quite nicely 
And in both of our functional dependencies, the determinant is a super key, and in fact, a candidate key and the primary key for the relations that they are a part of. So we are in B, C, and F for both of our relations now. Now let's look at the other approach we could have had to resolve our BCNF violation. What if we had chosen instead of student teacher, student subject as our primary key? So now we, uh, we still have our relation with teacher and subject over here, but in our student AP uh, relation, of course, student and subject together can functionally determine AP score just as well as student and teacher together could functionally determine their AP score. But now, if I ask you what teacher did IH123 have for English, well, when we try to join these back together, we don't know if their English teacher was Stefan or Campbell, right? In the previous resolution, I'll go back two slides here. If I ask you what course IH123 had Stefan for, we can look that up and see that Stefan taught IH123 English, right? What course did IH357 have Campbell for? Well, he had Campbell for English, right? So this is the good resolution. But if we had just kind of arbitrarily picked the other super key, we lose this information about uh, what teacher each student had for a subject. And the real crux of the issue here is that now this foreign key refers to an attribute in the other relation that is not a candidate key. And so that's causing this problem. It didn't really matter which candidate key we selected as primary key from, a, uh, from the perspective of uniquely identifying tuples within that table, but it did matter with relation to, or with regard to bringing these tables back together, okay? So, so the point is we, uh, we have to be kind of careful when we normalize from third normal form to boyce cod normal form. The, the steps to resolve are, are second normal form and third normal form violations. We can't really mess up, but BCNF is a little bit easier to, to mess up. So while it will clear up these uh, lingering data redundancy issues, if you find yourself in a situation where uh, you're going to lose some of, your, uh, some of your information and some of your dependencies when you go from 3NF to BCNF, then it would generally be uh, preferable to deal with a little bit of data redundancy in 3NF rather than to lose uh, information like uh, what teacher did a student have for a particular uh, subject. So at any rate, that is it for Boyce Cod Normal Form and that wraps up our discussion of Armstrong's axioms and normalization. So in the next video, we're going to be getting back into structured query language and I'll see you there.